When you're optimizing SCP, one big thing to consider is whether the SCP element is an image, uh, like in this example, or a text element, like here. And in this video, we're just going to take a quick look at three request waterfalls where the LCP element is a text element. So starting with this one, you can see the LCP element is a P tag, like this one on at the top of the page. And if we look at the waterfall, we can see there are basically two things that need to happen to display that P tag. First of all, we need to download the page HTML. And then after that, uh, the browser realizes it needs these like three vendor blocking CSS files and those also need to download, uh, and that's kind of happening here. And then once those are download, downloaded, all the text can appear after like you know a little bit of rendering time here, uh, as shown by this long task. And if you want to optimize the LCP in this example, um, I wouldn't focus so much on the server response for the HTML, just because that's pretty fast already. There's not too much you can optimize. But what's important here is what happens afterwards. And that's the render blocking CSS code. So in, we can see that um, we have these two blocking requests, but they are loaded from the same domain as the HTML. So they can reuse the same uh, network connection. So if you look at the connection ID, here you can see it's the same connection, it's the same server, but then this one, this Google Fonts file, is loaded from fonts to googleapis.com, and that's kind of what causes uh, the issue and the delay, because it needs a new server connection, and that takes time to establish. So the server connection, you can see that being established here with the DNS lookup, TCP connection, SSL connection, and then finally actually loading the um, CSS itself. So the main thing to consider here is just to avoid this like sequential set of connections being required. And the way to do that is either directly embed the CSS directly into, into the HTML or just move it into a CSS file on your own uh, server. Uh, in the past, there would have been an issue because um, there were older browsers that kind of need an older font file, and that kind of varies based on the user agent. But today, most browsers support WAF2, so it isn't such a big concern anymore. So yeah, this is the first one we can look at. But yeah, there's always like a different uh, set of consideration with these. So if you move on to the next example, you can see the LCP is actually a lot worse. And we can see that there are some issues here with the actual server response time which is taking 1.4 seconds. So that is one thing that we would look at improving here. We can also see there's a large number of like render blocking requests. Uh, they are loaded over HTTP2, as we can see here, which means they can all be made in parallel and they're not really all that huge. So they don't use all that much bandwidth. So it's not great, but it's also like not terrible. But if we kind of scroll down, we can see there's actually a, a sequential chain of CSS requests. Uh, like this one, because of the font being loaded from Typekit. So if I look at this request chain, I can see that first of all, we have to download the document, just like in the last example. Then we have to download some CSS, like in the last example. And again, it's from a new domain name. Uh, and then finally, which is why this LCP score is actually worse than before in the previous uh, website, uh, we can see that it actually takes a lot longer to download because there's another a CSS file that's kind of discovered via CSS at import inside of uh, this response here. Um, so yeah, we can see this is a longer sequential request chain. Uh, and the main thing to look at here is to just like make this not sequential anymore. So if you maybe preload this resource, uh, that would generally be a really good idea, but you probably can't fully predict it. Uh, so you can't embed a preload for this file in the HTML. Uh, but we can, what you can do is add a pre-connect. So you can tell the browser, okay, I'm, I'm going to need to load something from p.typekit.net. And then while the browser is loading the initial HTML file, the, uh, sorry, the initial CSS file, while that's in progress, you just start loading uh, the typekit. You start creating the typekit.net uh, server connection as well. And that kind of happens in the background. And here you can see we actually spend I don't know, like 600 milliseconds just for the DNS lookup. And then, you know, probably like about two seconds total on just on the connection. And you basically completely solve that problem with the pre-connect. Uh, one thing that's also really interesting here is kind of like, why does this connection actually take so long? And I think the reason for that is that the browser at that time is using a lot of bandwidth to download this image. You can kind of see that bandwidth being used with like these dark shaded blue areas and 
while that's in progress, the browser doesn't have a lot of resources to focus on creating this connection and downloading this render blocking file. Uh, so one other consideration would just be like adding like loading equals lazy or like fetch priority low to like reduce the kind of cost from loading this file in the background and just being able to focus on the render blocking resources so that this like H1 element uh, can show up more quickly. And then the final example uh, is actually our own website. So we can see that the this div element is the LCP element. Uh, the initial render is pretty quick, but then it takes you know another second and a half for the actual main page content to show up. Um, and this can happen a lot with JavaScript applications. So in this case, you can see we have a single page application, and while the HTML loads quickly, the actual page content depends on all of this JavaScript code. And you can see that, first of all, we have to download, I don't know, like 500 KB of JavaScript. Then after that, there's a bunch of like rendering tasks, uh, processing tasks, JavaScript execution. And then finally, our application starts loading. And the way to fix this generally would be like server-side rendering. In our example, we have like this JavaScript application and we, you know, this is kind of part of our app and of the signup process, so we're not that fast. But generally, yeah, if you kind of embed the initial, all the HTML code in the actual HTML file from the start, that's going to make your website a whole lot faster. Other options would be just reducing the size of, the, of these bundles, just reducing the overall download size. Um, yeah, those are like the main things kind of to look at in this example. Yes, yeah, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, and if you want to run your own website speed test and look at the waterfall, uh, we have the free website speed test on debugbrow.com and just enter your website and you can see um, the website, the network request waterfall for your website, as well as like potential performance optimizations.